Good day learners. Welcome to today's technical mathematics lesson. My name is Matule Latakomu. This lesson is brought to you by Saibon Discovery Center in collaboration with Houghton Department of Education. Welcome back grade elevens. Our topic of today is logarithms. Let's look at our lesson objectives. Uh, lesson objectives, at the end of this lesson, learners must be able to deal with exponents involving logarithmics, use the rules or laws of logarithms, simplify the expression of logarithms. So those are your lesson objectives. It means at the end of this lesson, you must be able to deal with that. Let's look at the laws of logarithms. We have the first law, we call it a product rule. With a product rule, we look at the log. You can see that we have the log of base B of x multiplied by y, x multiplied by y, then we can expand it and write it in a form of log b, log base b of x plus log base b of y. So what does it tell you? It tells you that when you're using a product rule, we can move from log that is having a multiple of two variables and when we expand them we separate the variables by the sign addition how to get so it means your multiplications goes hand in hand with addition the minute you expand from multiplication then you have to put the addition side between the two logs then when you're looking at the quotient rule remember quotient you are talking about division so when you're looking at the quotient rule, you realize that now we have the log base b of x divided by y. Of x divided by y. So when we expand it, we're going to write it as follows. Log of, uh, log of base b of x and minus log of base b of y. How to get? So you can see that now when we're speaking about division, we expand it by subtraction. So those are the two different uh, rules of product rule and the quotient rule. So you must be able to use them. Remember, you can use from expanding to a single log or move from the log to expanding it. Correct. So the third rule is our power rule. You know that when talking about power rule, we think of exponents. Then if you have a log base b of x to the power of n or to the exponent of n, then this one, it says we can write it as n log b, log base b of x. Correct. So they simply took this n and it multiplied the coefficients. So that's how you write it there. And it can go backward. We can move it from here as a coefficient to the exponent. So remember, as we, we're going this side, we can be able to go backwards. So that's what we're going to be looking uh, into today. So let's check our activities. With activity one, you can see there they say, the question says, write each of the following uh, as a single logarithmic expression how to get so remember on our table if you can check our product rule like i explained on the previous slide that the minute is expanded you can see you have log a plus log b then when you have to write it as a single logarithmic expression you will say log then you realize that here the expansion was positive then you will have the multiplication of a times b. 
So if ever you have the quotient rule now, where now you have log of A minus the log of B, you know that your subtraction have goes, goes hand in glove with the quotient, which is division. So as you write it as a single form, it's going to be log of A over B. Then you know the power rule, we have explained it as well. So looking at our question from number one to number five, we have to write all of those things as a single uh, logarithmic expression. So we thought any waste of time, let's go to the first one. The question says we must write each of the following as a single logarithmic expression. So now you can see that we have log of x plus log of y plus log of z. We have all additions there. So as we write it as a single log, we're going to say log of what? Of x multiply by y multiply by z because there we only have positive uh, signs so remember positive or addition goes hand in hand with multiplication so you can simply write it as the log of x y and z so it's as simple as a b c remember you have to recall your your rules or laws of exponents as you are dealing with this. So looking at the second one, we can see in the second one we have 2 log x plus 3 log y. Then you can see that here there are two things that are involved or two laws that are involved. The first law is the law of uh, power rule and the second one is the one of um, product rule. So we have to apply the one of power rule. Remember, with the law of power rule, it says if you have a log of x to the power of n, you can multiply this to the coefficient and you have n log of x. Correct? So now we're moving from this side going backward. That's what we have to do. You can see as our question there, you have 2 log of x. Then we're going to write it as log x squared plus log y cube. You can see that we have reversed our, our power rule. Correct. Then from there, you realize that between those two logs, there is a positive sign. Means addition there. Then you know that as you reverse the expansion, you put it as a single form, you will have to write it in a single form. And, multi and multiplication goes hand in glove with addition. So I'm going to say log of x squared multiplied by y cube. Then you can write your final answer as your log of x squared y cube. So that's how you will write your final answer. So all the rules of logs your product rule, quotient rule, and power rule, they have to be applied in this type of activity. So moving to the third activity, now you look, can look at the expression there as given. You have log base A of X and log base A of Y and log base A minus log base A of Z. How to get so we have between the log of x and y we have addition and between the log of y and z we have subtraction so now we think of product together with quotient and now when we write it as a single log you're gonna have the log base a of what of x multiplied by y because between x and y, there is a addition sign there. Then between y and z, there is division. Then it means we are going to divide everything by what? 
by z. Then that's how you will write it. In a simple form, you will see log base a of x multiplied by y divided by z. So that's how you can write it as a single form. So these are simple uh, methods that you need to remember when you're dealing with uh, logs. Then we go to the fourth one. We write each of the following as a single logarithmic expression. So now this one involves numbers, but remember we have to just put it as a single um, expression. So we have log of 15 plus log of 3 minus log of 5 plus log of 2. So in this case, you will have to say log of 15 multiplied by 3 all over 5 because between 15 and 3 there is an addition sign between 3 and 5 there is a subtraction sign that's why we divided by 5 and now the last one we have addition it means you will multiply again by what by 2 correct so it means you will have the log of 15 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 all divided by 5. So we can end it there without multiplying our numbers. Remember, we put it as a single uh, expression. We can take it backward if we want. We can still expand it out together. So now, looking at um, number 5, we have log of 18 minus 2 log of 3 minus log of 2. So we have all negative signs there. Correct. So how are we going to write this one now? We are firstly going to apply our power rule in the second term there. So we're going to say log of 18 minus the log of 3 to the power of 2 minus the log of 2. Correct. So now, how am I going to write this one? I'm going to have the log of 18 divided by 3 squared, we know that is 9. Where I got 9 is 3 squared, which is equal to 9. I just simplified that. Then multiplied by 2. Then you are going to have the log of 18 all over 9 multiplied by, by 2. You can simplify it and write it as log of 18 all over 18. Correct. So now, why did I say 9 multiplied by 2, yet we still have negative there? And we said when we have um, neg I mean negative, we divide. So in this case, looking at the numbers, you will be having 18 divided by 9, all divided by 2. Correct. We are supposed to write it like that because there are two division signs. Then now we can simplify this by saying 18 all over 9 divided by 2. When we write it like this, then it, it makes sense now. Then we're going to know that this one is divided by 1. Then when we're saying 18 divided by 9 multiplied by 1 over 2, you can see that now our answer is going to be 18 all over 9. 9 multiplied by 2. Hence, now you see how I wrote it there. Correct. So, this uh, explanation makes sense now why I said 9 multiplied by 2. So, that's how you solve this type of um, 
logarithms are we together now moving forward we still have activity number two with activity number two they say we must write each logarithmic expression in expanded form now it's given in a single form and then now we must expand it then as we expand it remember we have product rule quotient rule and our power rule then with your product you know that when they are multiplying when you expand the log must add each other when there is a division when they expand the log the logs must uh, subtract each other and then the power rule you know that it will multiply uh, the the coefficient of that log there so those are the three basic uh, laws that you need to remember so without any waste of time let's tackle our questions the first one we have log a squared divided by b so remember we must expand this one because now we have a division we think of our subtraction so we're gonna say the log of a squared minus the log of b correct then from there you realize that okay our first term a is still carrying a uh, squared day then we can now apply the power rule to say this two now must come and multiply the coefficient you will have two log of a squared not squared sorry two log of a because we removed now the two by multiplying the coefficient is going to be two log of a minus log of b so that's how uh, you expand that expression there correct so the second one we have log base a of b minus c so now it's simple because we only have um, division we think of subtraction this one is going to be log base a of b minus log base a of c so with expanding that's what you do it's as simple as abc correct remember this base when you have a base of a it must be in any term all the terms must contain the base of a correct so now um, we're looking at the third one we have a divided by b multiplied by c so i explain this one to say if you have a all over b multiplied by c now we're moving back as we move back you're gonna have a all over b multiplied by 1 over c then we're gonna have a all over b divided by c so that's where it's coming from the minute you see the variables that are multiplying each other on the denominator you must know that there was a division sign there before multiplication it means when we expand this one we're gonna have the log of a minus the log of b minus again the log of c so that's how it's going to look like we are not going to have any positive um, sign there they are all going to be negative because it's a divided by b which is negative a divided by b which is negative and divided by c again 
which is going to be uh, negative again. So as we expand it, that's how it will look like. Correct. So don't confuse that multiplication on your denominator. So the fourth one now, we have log base 3 of x, y, and z squared. Then now as we expand this thing, we're going to have the log of base 3 of x plus the log of base 3 of y plus the log of base 3 of z squared. But remember with this one, the last term, we have to apply our power rule. Then the power rule, we're going to have log base 3 of x plus log base 3 of y plus now 2 log base 3 of z. So that's how you expand this type of uh, the expression. Okay. Now, moving to the last one now, number five, we write each logarithmic expression in expanded form. So now, looking at this one, you can see that we are having the log of A multiplied by B. There, when they multiply each other on the numerator, we know that the addition is happening there. Then now, when they multiply each other on the numerator, I mean denominator, we know that a subtraction happened there and division happens there. Okay, so now when we expand this, we're going to have the log of A plus, let's increase the font of A, plus the log of B minus now, because now you can see that A plus B, they are multiplying each other, they are in the denominator. The minute we go to the, I mean, they are in the numerator, the minute you go to the denominator, now we talk subtraction. Then we're going to have the log of C minus the log of D. And I think I explained why do we still have negative and negative there in the denominator. I explained that step. So this is how you will expand that type of a logarithmic expression. So that's how you do activity number one and activity number two. In terms of writing this log from expanded to a single one, and you move from a single log to the expanded one. So now we move uh, forward. So since we have learned about our laws, those laws now we have what we call the deductions of uh, logarithms. So those are the rules that now we need to look at them and be careful when we look into our logs. Remember, sometimes when you answer these questions, they will say use without the use, I mean, ex, uh, ex simplify without the use of a calculator. So we don't have to use our calculator, but we have to know how we apply these deductions. So the first one, it says if you have a log where the base and a log of a number are the same, you can see that we have log base x of x. When the base and the number of the log are the same, then it will be equal to 1. It will be equal to 1. For instance, if I have log of 3, uh, base 3 of 3, then you can see that the log of the number are the same. I will have 1. Correct. That's what it says. And now, the second one, it says, if you have a log of any base, base can be any number, but the number of a log is 1, then it will be equal to 0. So 
With the second one, they just basically mean if you have the log of base 100 of 1, automatically it will become 0. So those are the deductions that we have to understand. Then now going to the third one, they say if you have a log of any number, log of x, and then they didn't specify what is the base, then we assume that the base is 10. You can see in the bracket they said if the base is not given, we assume that our base is what? Is 10. You can see if they're saying the log of x and they gi don't give you the base, always you assume that the base is, is 10. And if you have a log of any base and the number of the log is negative, you know that it will be undefined. We don't have negative logs. Correct. And then there will be where we're talking about changing uh, the base of a logarithm. What it means by that? It means if you have a log of base A of B, A and B can actually be in a coefficient, but each will carry a log. You will have log base C of B and log base C of A out here. So that's how you can expand it. But we'll talk about this uh, on a later stage. Now we have to look at our first three uh, deductions and see how can we apply them. Okay, let's look at our third activity. Third activity says we must simplify the following logarithmic expressions without a use or without using a calculator. Without using a calculator. So in this case, remember, we must remind ourselves of our deductions where you know that when you have the log of um, negative number, there is no solution. You have the log of zero, you don't have any solution. But when you have the log of one, then it will be zero. And we have our four questions there. Without any waste of time, we can tackle our questions. Uh, let's look at the first one. Remember with the first one, guys, you can see that we have log of 5 plus log of 2 and is expanded. Then we must simplify it. Correct. Then you can see that the bays are not given. When the bays are not given, then we assume that our base is 10. You can see from the explanation there that when we are given the log of x and if no base is written, you can assume it's a common log with base 10. That's where now we put our 10. So now what we do here, it's expanded. When we simplify, we're going to write it in a single form. And then we have explained that when you have a positive sign between those two logs, you must think of multiplication. So how am I going to write this one? I'm going to have the log of base 10, 5 multiplied by 2. That's how you will write it as a single um, term. Now, we move forward and see log of base 10. Now, if we multiply the two numbers inside the bracket, we're seeing 5 times 2, you're going to get 10. Then you remember our deductions that says if you have log of x, I mean log of base x of x is equal to 1. You can see that here the base and the number of the log are equal or they are the same. Then this one, it will be simply 1. So that, those are the importance of um, deductions when you, you are dealing with the simplifying of logs. You can see that we haven't used any calculator from there. But you can still check your answer after showing all the steps. You can take your calculator and then 
you punch your question. And if you get one, you will know that your steps were, were correct. Going to the second one now, we still simplify this without the use of a calculator. We have log base 6 of 18 minus log base 6 of 3. Then now between those two logs, there is a subtraction sign there, minus sign. Then you know that minus go hand in hand with division. So as we write this in a single form, our base is the same from both terms. Base is 6, then we're going to write 18 divided by 3 because negative or uh, yeah negative goes hand in hand with division so now we move forward we're gonna say log base 6 of if now you know that 3 divided by 18 how many times does 3 goes into 18 3 goes into 18 6 times then you can see that now the base and the number of log are the same is log, C, uh, log base 6 of 6, then we can write it as 1 according to our deductions. So you see how simple it is to work with these um, logarithms. You just need to know your deductions and know your laws of logarithms. Looking at the third one now, we have log base 8 of 1 plus log base b of b. So now, remember, with our deductions, we said any, num uh, any log that has the number of 1, it will be 0. So here you simply say 0 plus, and when the base and the number of the log are the same, like there, you can see it's b and b then it's going to be 1. Then you're going to have 1 there. So this one, you just needed to know your deductions, and it was as simple as A, B, and C. Okay, activity number 3, the last one, number 4. Now we have to simplify this one. We have two log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 10 minus uh, log base 2 of 5. Then with this one, we need to simplify it. Looking at the first term, you can see that we have the coefficient of 2. And we can apply the reverse of the power rule there. Then when we apply the reverse of a power rule, it means these two, it will come to the exponent of 4. You will have 4 to the exponent of 2. So how are you going to write it? You are going to say the log of base 2 of 4 squared plus the log of base 2 of 10 minus the log of base 2 of 5. That was the first, first step that was supposed to, to happen. Correct. Then now you can see that we have log base 2 throughout our terms. Then we can write it as a single term. We are going to say log base 2 of. Remember, we have 4 squared and there is addition. Addition means you multiply it by what? By 10. Then from there, there is subtraction. Subtraction means you will divide it by 5. So that's how you are going to, to write it. So with what is inside the bracket, you can even check it with your calculator. It's still fine. You will have 4 squared multiplied by 10 it will give you 160. And if you say 160 divided by 5, you will get 32. So now you will have the log of 2 of what? Of 
32. The log base 2 of 32. So, hence we said exponents are going to be involved in this. Remember, we can still write the 32 to the its prime factor. So, we are going to say log base 2 of 2 to the power of 5. Remember, as you say 2 to the power of 5, you are going to get 32. Then we also apply the power rule of saying we take this 5 and must multiply the coefficient. Then we're going to have 5 log base 2 of 2. Then we know through our deduction that when the base, when the base and the number of log are the same, then you write it as 1. So we're going to have 5 into 1, then the answer there is going to be 5. Correct. So, now, we are done with our activity 3. Looking at activity 4, we simplify the following logarithmic expression without the use of a calculator. Looking at this activity, now you ask yourself, what is happening? They look a little bit complex, but bear in mind that whenever you know your rules, then everything, it will be history. Then, we have to look at the first one there. Let's look at the first one. We simplify the following ex a logarithmic expression without using a calculator. Now you can see that there is something special inside the bracket and we have to deal with that first. Then we have log base 3 of what? Of log base 5. But we know that our 125 it can be written uh, as a prime factor, which is going to be 5 to the power of 3. It's going to be 5 to the power of 3. So now you know that this 3, it will go and multiply the, the coefficient there. Correct. Then you are going to have the log of 3 into 3 log base 5 of 5. Correct? Then we will have log base 3 of 3 into 1. Why are we saying 3 into 1? We know that when the base and the number are the same, according to the deduction, is going to be equal to 1. Then moving forward, we're going to have log base 3 of 3. Then it's still equal to 1. It's still equal to 1. So those are the basic steps that you need to follow when you are simplifying this one. Moving to the second one. We do have um, the expression there. We have log base 2 of 8 squared minus log base 7 of 49 plus log base 5 of 1. So dealing with this one, we are going to look at the prime factors of 8 and 49. Then we can have log base 2 of 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2. Remember, I'm looking for the prime factor of 8. Prime factor of 8, you can write it as 2 to the power of 3. Minus log base 7, then the prime factor of 49, it can be 7 squared. We know that 7 squared is equal to 49. 
plus now when you have log base 5 of 1 that one we can find the prime factor but we know that the log of a number which is 1 it will be what? 0 then that's how we simplify that one moving forward we're gonna have log base 2 of 2 now let's look at our rules of exponents we have to multiply the two numbers 3 and 2 then it gives us 6 then from there we move forward to say minus log of 7 base log of ba uh, base 7 of 7 squared there is no need for us to continue writing plus 0 anything you add it to 0 is still that number then now moving forward we apply now our our rule of power where we take this 6 and multiply the coefficient and we also take these two and you multiply our coefficient there then we're gonna have 6 log base 2 of 2 minus 2 log base 7 of 7 then writing this one we're going to have 6 into 1 minus 2 into 1 because the base and the number and here the base and the number are the same then you're gonna have simply say 6 minus 2 6 minus 2 which is going to give you 4 and remember you can still go back to your question punch it inside your calculator check if ever you will get 4 as your answer if you can get 4 as your answer then you know that all the steps that you have undergone they are correct are we clear so now looking at the third one don't worry about decimal numbers the minute you look into these decimal numbers they can trick you but you have to know how to attack them simple terms you will be having log of 4 plus log of 25 all divided by log of 0, 0,01 then the one in the numerator log 4 uh, plus log of 5 we must write them in a single uh, form which we are going to use the log of 4 multiplied by 25 remember addition goes hand in hand with multiplication then with the denominator 0, 0,01 we can write it as 1 over 100 you can test that with your calculator it's still fine then as you move forward you're gonna have log of if you say 4 times 25 you're gonna have 100 all over then we know that as we moving from our log I mean rules of exponent they said if you have any variable or number to the power of negative uh, exponent you can write it as a positive exponent where you will have uh, 1 over a to the power of n that is the basic rule of exponents when we're dealing with definitions of exponents so I can write this 100 to have the power of negative 1 like that and I continue with my work and remember now the base is not given when the base is not given we said we assume that the base is 10 it means throughout as I'm working with this uh, my base there's going to be 10 my base there's also going to be to be 10 correct so now we're gonna have the log of base 10 now our hundred 
we can write it as 10 to the power of 2. 100, if we can write it as 10 to the power of 2. All over the log of base 10 to what now? 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 2 multiplied by negative 1. Remember there is negative 1 there. Then you're going to have the log. Uh, apply our power rule there. Apply our power rule there. You know as you apply the power rule, these two will come there. And if these ones, they multiply each other, you're going to have negative 2. Then you will also bring it to the coefficient there. Then you're going to have 2 log of log base 10 of 10 all over negative 2 log base 10 of 10. So you will simply write it as uh, 2 into 1 all over negative 2 into 1. Then we're going to have negative 1 as your answer. So those are the steps that you will follow to simplify that expression there. All the time, after arriving at your answer, go back to your question. Put it inside the calculator. Check if ever the answer that you got here, you will have it inside the calculator after punching your question there. Then, even if they said without the use of a calculator, you will still check your answers, but showing all the steps that you have done. Correct? Uh, looking at the last one in activity number four, we simplify the following logarithmic expression without using a calculator. Then now you look at your expression there. Then we have to deal with it. So as we're dealing with our expression there, we are going to get or look for the prime factors of 32, the prime factor of 243, the prime factor of 16, and the prime factor of 81. Then they will lead us to, to our answer. In your numerator, you have log A. The prime factor of 32 is going to be 2 to the power of 5. You know your 32, you can write it as 2 to the power of 5. Plus, log base B, then the prime factor of uh, 2 for 3, 2 for 3, is going to give you 3 to the power of 5. Then you're going to go now to your denominator. With your denominator, remember you have log of base A of what? Of 1 all over. Now with 16, we can write it as 2 to the power of 4. 1 over 2 to the power of 4 minus the log of base b of what? Of 3 to the power of 4. Remember when we're saying 3 to the power of 4, you get 81. Then we can move uh, forward by saying now with your uh, numerator, we can apply our power rule. This 5 to the coefficient and also that 5 there to the coefficient. That is our power power rule. Then we're going to write it as 5 log base A base A of 2 plus 5 log base B of 3 all over. Now looking at the one in our numerator, 1 uh, minus, I mean, 1 over 2 to the power of 4. 
Remember 2 to the power of 4. 1 all over 2 to the power of 4. We can write it as 2 to the power of negative 4. We can write it like that. So we're going to have uh, log a 2 to the power of negative 4, right? Minus log base b of 3. Log base b of 3 to the power of 4. Now with this one again, we will apply our power rule there. Then as we apply our power rule, then we're going to have to say 5 log a of 2 plus 5 log b of 3 all over negative 4 log base a of 2 minus 4 log base b of 3. Correct. So now, as we're moving forward, you can see that on your denominator, there is a common factor. And also on your numerator, there is a common factor. Your numerator, the common factor will be 5. Denominator, your common factor is going to be negative 4. Correct. So, as we move forward, that's what we are going to take out as a, as a common factor. So, with your numerator, if you're taking out 5 as a common factor, we are going to be remain with 5 into log base A of 2 plus log base B of 3. That's what we are going to get there. And looking at our denominator as well, if we're taking out 4 as a negative, 4 as a uh, common factor, we are going to have negative 4 into log base A of 2 plus log base B of 3. You can look into it. If we're taking the common factor that I have circled, this is what you will be remaining with. And looking at the numerator and denominator, you can see that these two can actually cancel each other. Then the final answer is going to be negative 5 over 4. So that's how you deal with this type of the expression. You see, it's a little bit long, but the minute you do it step by step and know your rules of uh, laws and exponents, it becomes very simple. Okay? Moving forward, we're looking at activity number five. Activity number five, we simplify the following logarithmic expressions without using a calculator. Now, with this one, that's where now we're talking about a change of base formula. For any positive number A and B and C, with B not being equal to 1 and C that can be equal to 1. So we are talking about B that can be equal to 1 uh, and C that, equal a, that can be equal to, equal to 1. So it's basically telling us that the minute you have log of base b of a, you can write it as log of uh, a over log of b. And then c it can be the base, the new base. Correct. So now we have four questions there where we have to apply this type of um, technique. And you can see that the base and the number there, they are not the same. Correct. So now, how are we going to deal with this? The first one, we have the 
log of 8 base 8 of 16. Correct. Log of base 8 of what? 16. So how are we going to write this one? We are going to say the log of 16 all over log of 8. That's where we are going to start. Then from there, we can write 16 uh, as a prime factor and also 8 as a prime factor. We're going to have log of 2 to the power of 4 all over log of 2 to the power of 3. That's how I will write 16 and 4. Correct? Then from there you know that we will apply our simple basic rule of power where we multiply there by the, uh, the coefficient. Then from there we're going to have the log uh, 4 log of 2 all over 3 log of 2. So now you can see that your numerator and denominator, they have log of 2. They can take each other out. Then you're going to have 4 over 3. Punch it in a calculator. You must get 4 over 3 as your answer. Then you will know that you have applied the technique correctly. So we move to the second one. We have 3 log of 81. Uh, log base 81 of 27. Then we're going to have 3 into log of 27 all over um, log of 81. Right? Then we can write 27 in 81 with their prime factors, we're going to have 3 to the power of 3. And the other one is going to be the log of 3 to the power of 4. Correct? We still have 3 in 2. Now, we will apply the very same rule of powers. Then we're going to have um 3 log of 3 4 log of 3 then you will know very well that those two will take each other out then we're going to have 3 into 3 over 4 then you're going to have 9 over Four. That's how you are going to write your, your answer, the second one. Always punch it in a calculator, check if you get 9 over 4. After you have went through all the processes and steps, operations, to get your answer, only after that, then... We go to the third one. We have log of base 1 over 4 of 256. Then you're looking into the fraction and you panic. Relax and apply the knowledge that you know of the change of bases. We're going to have log of 256 all divided by log of 1 over 4. Then you will write log of 256 as a prime factor. We are going to have 2 to the power of 8 all over the log of 2 to the power of negative 2. We all know by now that if we write 2 to the power of negative 2, if we punch it in a calculator, it is going to give you 1 over 4. Then from there, we apply our power rule. We apply our power rule. Then we're going to have 
our 8 log of 2 all over negative 2 log of 2. Then the two will take each other out. Then you're going to have negative 4 as your final answer there. That it was as easy as A, B, and C. Correct. So, we're looking into the last one, activity number five. So now, we have two brackets, and we can multiply them together. We just need to work with those brackets. What is inside the bracket, we have to work with it up until we arrive uh, at our final answer. So what we do, we're going to start by saying, the first bracket, we're going to have log of 4 all over log of 3. The second bracket, log of 27 all over log of 2. That's where you start. Then you can see that 4 and 27, we can look for their prime factors. We're going to have now the log of 2 to the power of 2 all over log of 3. Right? We go to the second one. Log of 3 to the power of 3 all over log of 2. Then from there you can apply the power rule. Applying the power rule, you will be having 2 log of 2 all over log of 3. Then we can write it as multiply by 3 log of 3 all over log of 2. Then you know that with the numerator and denominator, when there is multiplication, the numerator can cancel the denominator. You can see that here we're going to have 2 that will cancel that 2 there. And we're going to have the log of 3 that will cancel the log of 3 there. You will be remaining with uh, 2 times 3, which is going to give you 6. So you go back to your question, you punch log base 3 of 4 multiplied by log base 2 of 27. And the answer you must get there is 6. Then that's how you solve these logarithms. I hope this was the nice lesson and you've benefited a lot. So this is the end of the lesson. Go through this lesson again. Remind yourself of what we have done and prepare for your temp test. Thank you.